I've hiked a lot in the mountains and there have been a number of times when a friend farther up the trail has turned to me with a warm and encouraging gesture to beckon me onward. I've thought of those moments in the writing of my new book, Neurodharma, which is about becoming as wise and happy, loving and strong, contented and peaceful as any person can ever be. This book draws on the examples of many of the great sages and teachers throughout history, as well as other individuals that have not become famous, who have explored what could be called the peaks or pinnacle of human possibility, the mountain of enlightenment, the mountain of awakening. And I imagine them farther up the trail, also turning with a sweet smile and beckoning us to join them. And wonderfully, these days, with modern neuroscience, there is increasing scientific evidence for understanding what is happening in the brain and the body when people are moving really into deep states of happiness, contentment, and love. What's going on in the brain, for example, when a person is really settled in a sense of calm strength, even when crazy stuff is happening around them? Um, how do you continue to feel grateful for the good things you've received in your life, even as you face disappointments and losses? How do you uh, hold others in your heart while at the same time being firm and assertive with them if you need to be? How do you actually do that? And increasingly with modern science, we're developing answers to these kinds of questions. So I draw on this historically unprecedented meeting of new science and ancient wisdom for really practical tools in developing these seven qualities of awakening. Steadying your mind, warming your heart, resting in fullness, and then being wholeness, receiving nowness, opening into allness while finding timelessness. All that might sound kind of exotic and part of what's cool about it is that it really is about the upper reaches of human potential. And at the same time, boy, is it useful in everyday life. You know, to develop a sense of being uh, undivided internally and accepting yourself in terms of wholeness while really being in the present moment, not caught up in the past or the future, that is really useful while you're dealing with a conflict with another person or grappling with some kind of loss, for example. So whether it's at the beginning of the path or the middle or toward the end, um, this book, Neurodharma, is really about a scientifically grounded and wisdom-informed uh, development of these ways of being in yourself every day. And I find this material incredibly interesting to explore. It's so full of hope, including in times that for many can seem quite turbulent and even dark and difficult. It's such hopeful and inspiring material, and I hope you'll explore it with